Right. Who is here? Who's here? Right. Oh, we've got people here. That's a good start. That is a good start. Right. Uh, hey, Ross, David, Mike, Rattlehead85, Glenn, Asa, Hinkcliff, uh, Reese, Brad. Um, how are you doing this evening? All right? Yeah? <laughs> Uh, can I just check you guys are hearing me all right? Because I can't hear me and stuff. So everyone can hear me and see me. This is the first time we're doing this. Hello, hello, hello. All good, all good, good, good. Thank you, thank you, love. All right. Awesome. All right, so. Oh, good, 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 good. So I can I can talk about regulations and stuff, but what I kind of was wanting to do to see first of all if you guys wanted me to answer any questions or anything that you're struggling with your training, if you are still doing. Have any of you guys done it now? Have you guys actually done it, and you're just you know, if extra extra talk or something, or are we still are we still on the learning curve? Have we not started it yet? End of February, is that when your exam is? Yeah. Ah, oh, Kevin's done his, okay. Did you do well? Right, all I can hear is my voice echoing. Okay, I'm gonna play a little bit of music. Let me know if this is too loud. All right. First year apprentice. Awesome, awesome, end of the month, end of the month, great. Exam only, 17th of January. Right. Um, how are you finding it? I mean, are you are you guys just doing the YouTube training, or are you uh, you know, are you uh, going to the course? Uh, obviously, say wondering which sets of videos to set with Dave. Um, what do you mean by which set? Uh, for regulations or what? Eighty-nine percent. Awesome. Awesome. How long should you put in the study to pass? <laughs> Yeah, um, it really depends on how much time you're gonna actually um, have in your study time, and how much of it you can retain. To be honest, um, with things like the uh, the YouTube content and stuff, you can always just you know pick it up as you go along. I know some guys that have been doing it for a few months and they still haven't planned any exam yet. And it's already in there. Fundamentally, there are so many practice exams. I mean, hey, we may have a go at one. Um, might try one on Sparky Facts, but not, not try their one. So you know you can always you can always assess yourself now before you're ready for your exam. Um, you know, so just signed up to Learning Zone, yeah. Uh, if it's help, ex excellent Rattlehead, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I decided to put the videos up because there was a force, you know, the hands hands were, were forced to go on to training and I think a lot of the training options at the moment are just here, highlight the book, highlight this, this may come up, this may come up. Um, and we just want, you know, I just wanted to be able to offer um, more opportunity for learning, really. Um, but it's, it's a bit boring, uh, to be honest, isn't it? Um, so I, I guess benefit of being on YouTube, you can always just pause it and walk away for a period of time. Uh, end of Feb, end of the month, exam only. Not bad, 89%. Four day, three course. Uh, yeah, I, we, um, I work with a couple of companies and I've done a couple of one day courses. And the big problem with the one day course is RPL, recognized prior learning. And I know that, I know that the, the default thing is if you've got the amendment three of the 17th edition, you should be set. But you really need to understand that the assessment is the full book and if you've not actually stayed familiar with that content all you're going to have on that one day is update information and then a couple of times i've delivered it for a company it's those are the ones where we struggle uh you know i work with one company that does it over four days which is an absolute blessing um three days is tight three days is tight um it's a lot of information it's a lot of information to take in Feeling confident, enjoying the videos, feeling confident. That's that's it fundamentally. Um, it's it's actually you know taking the, taking information in and I I do you know things like this stream right now are just the opportunity for you guys to kind of 
either tell me to say this more clearly or talk, you know, go through this again or explain this, you know, interaction. Um, we need more opportunities for interaction. Um, and, you know, YouTube's taking off with a lot of other channels now and it's really, really a good time, I think, to be in the training part of uh, this, this trade. Well, especially if you're doing the long method. Uh, we have obviously issues with the shorter method. Uh, Railhead got all six, he was really pleased. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, seems to be a lot of focus from Sydney Girls towards auxiliary circuits. Feedback from learners. Yeah, do you know? I've seen. I've seen. Uh, I mean, obviously they introduced that in Amendment Three a little bit, but I think. I think over a few the few next editions, we're going to actually have to have a second consideration of design with auxiliary circuits. Because if you think about it, whilst they may be you know extra low voltage or fairly fairly gentle circuits, they are critical, and we need to start thinking about their integrity, about um, segregation. And we may even start thinking about, you know, certification of those systems. So they are going to develop over time, um, most definitely. I do believe there is a standard that actually has some reporting on those systems. It's not in BS7671, though. Do some mocks go straight to the exam? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there, is, there are two angles of this. So obviously, the first is the exam. And lots of people focus their training on the exam and getting you to pass the exam with mock 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 and i think that is a good thing for you to do yourself and um, to understand obviously what's going to happen and to understand how you do and you know assess your own performance that's i mean that's why i think sparky facts is a good resource but do make sure your trainer doesn't kind of shove you in front of practice papers after practice papers make sure that you have that time to actually interpret and understand the regulations a little bit better Mm hmm Good. If it helps, but you make good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So everyone's having a good go at it. Has anyone uh, also uh, any views on learning zone so paper for the content practice questions exam simulator? Just need to book my exam Monday. Learning zone. Which one's that one? Let me have a quick look. Is that the one that Sparky Facts recommends? <laughs> Have you actually done it, the uh, Peter? Have you done the training with Learning Zone? How did you How did you find it? Was it Was it focused on training? Or was it focused on Here's an exam. Let's get you ready for an exam. Because that That's That's unfortunately something that a lot of them are doing. That's not that one. Learning Zone. Is that Learn Zone Media or is that something different? Danny, how do I rate the online courses? Um, here's the thing. I think going to college and ha having that time off of off of work is valuable um, if you're trained properly. Fortunately, many many training companies are not training properly. There, um, I went to observe one that I was going to do some work with and I went on the second day which was about 10 hours into the 35 hour learning journey and they're already doing practice exams and you know technically it should be much more effective to go to do a three or four day um, but you're only supposed to have four hours in that period of time to do preparation for assessment and the delivery of your assessment and that's just not the case now there's so much um, pressure on pass rates in training now that they're just sacrificing training and they're just giving you pass and you can do all that yourself you know and that's the thing and with online resources you can obviously dip yourself in and out and in and out and you can you know you can turn the brain on and when the brain turns off you can stop and you can go back and i do i do think moving forward that whilst we still need to go to centers for effective observation and assessment but i, I do think that online as a learning platform is better as long as it's accessible um well not not obviously free for all but um you know you need to be able to preview everything you know um take for take for example learning lounge i mean i've 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 um been watching learning lounge content for donkeys i've got their dvds somewhere they put an awful lot of effort an awful lot of time an awful lot of money and they do make quality training and if you know if i had if I had, I think they're like 350, if I had that money and I had to go on an online course that I paid for, it'd be that one. Because I know that there was effort put in and I know that the, the training is that. Um, 
But unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, I think that online learning is a little bit more um, effective. Or maybe it's just the training that we've created. Um, the feedback we're getting is very, very good. Um, but we're not saying, here's the index page. We're not saying, highlight this, highlight this. You know, We're kind of saying, here's some random crap information. Think about it yourself. Um, and everyone's kind of taking it quite well. Um, let me just make this a little bit bigger. Ba -ba 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 there we go. Um, yeah, so that's my opinion right now on the courses. Um, Four-day courses should be better. Should be. Um, unfortunately, they're very, very deaf. They're very, very diverse. Um, and a couple of couple of um, Sparky colleagues I know on LinkedIn, they've done this lately. They've gone to college, and they've been, un, you know, they've been subjected to the training, and they've come out and they've reflected on that, and they've said, "Was this of value to me?" And a couple of them have gone back to the training company, and they've actually said, "You know." You trained me to pass. You didn't train me on this or on this or on this. And then, you know, if we start asking back at training companies, then they'll they'll have to improve. If we don't, they won't improve. Electrical courses online have the best mock tests. So oh, I'll check them out. Let me just add that because you know this is one of the hardest things. Writing mock tests takes for so long, and and I do now and then want to check some out myself because. If I write my own question papers for myself, that's not going to do me any good, is it? Uh, Napit uh, rang you twice to offer you their course. Oh, okay. Um, that's Premier Training, isn't it? No. Yeah. Um, I've not heard any negative feedback about them. LearnZone Media. Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe my, my concern with LearnZone Media was... Uh, and I'm not going to say anything too negative about them. My concern with them, because I had a chap on Facebook, um, he signed up to them earlier on, and he showed me this, this here. This is their layout. And it's kind of like, okay, yeah, you go through, there's an introduction. We can go through the introduction a little bit later. Um, that's free. But this is the paid content. And my concern was this. The, the time that's covered through part four is 80 minutes. Okay, and that might seem like a lot. But if I look, if I actually count up mine, my part four is 265 minutes. So either I talk and waffle a lot, or there's a lot of information missing from that part four. But please, um, you know, look at it and see, compare it with mine and, uh, feed, you know, I'm not saying feedback to them. I'm saying just, you know, let me know if I've gone too far. Let me know if I've waffled too much. That'd be helpful. Uh, nice T-shirt. Thank you, Father. Yes. Um, gift from the from the missus. From the missus for Christmas. Uh, guys in chat, uh, Fiat Watts, that's my old man. Yeah, very ethical guy. Very good guy. My lecturer, um, Kevin Pepper, my lecturer told me that bringing a new book out in a year and a half with Amendment 1. Well, yeah, there's, um, oh, God, I'm trying to remember the exacts, but there's a strict rule where they can only do, like, three or so uh, uh, major amendments between editions, but Amendment 1 is, is, is well, I'm not going to say it's signed, still delivered, but it was already, you know, nearly compiled by the time that this edition was published because remember with the public drafts so much content was pulled out you know they didn't put that in the trash they just put that on the shelf for amendment one if you go to appendix 17 energy efficiency the first thing it tells you is oh this will become part eight in a future amendment um and we've got quite a bit of um information that kind of tells us about some of the content coming in in amendment one some of us I, 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 some of it i can't obviously talk about live on stream um and it's something that e the E5 group do keep a very close eye on um, with regards to integrity and what people do as information. But, uh, you know, uh, Amendment 1 will come. Um, the question would be, would you have to do another course? I bloody hope not. Uh, no doubt I'll provide something for free, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, they already have a core agenda, yes. And even that core agenda had errors in it. So, you know, perf perfect. It's, you know, it's crazy. 
Uh, you did the three-day full course. NIC, personally, you've it very good, although I spent time revising with your video content. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's obviously hard to, to decide if you felt that theirs was enough, but, I mean, if you felt confident, that's the key. If you're confident in doing your assessment, then you're golden. Okay, and again, um, I mean, Phil Watts said in the chat, he, he'd agree with me, one day courses, we don't, we just don't like them because unfortunately employers will put you on them because you tick the box of the Amendment 3, but retention of that course isn't there. And again, that's the benefit of having it on YouTube now though, I guess, you can always kind of just pick it back up. GSH, explain to everyone why you or your dad could be old in the way you're... <laughs> Hello, Gary. All right, how are you? Beer services one could really do with an overhaul. Yes, it's um, it's without 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 going into too much of it. It's 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 it's, it's outdated with the structure that it's in right now. Um, and the training is definitely, the assessment method is definitely outdated. Uh, you know, just passing an exam and carrying on. We need to make sure we develop a working knowledge of the regulations. If you know the regulations. You don't have to know them word for word, but if you understand the structure and the layout, you'll be a better designer, you'll be a better installer, and you'll be a much, much better inspector. Um, it's one of the it's one of the things that kind of pulled me back into doing regulations because I was really heavily um, interested in special and testing when I was back on the tools, and I'd open up the regs again and again and again to identify new observations that just weren't in my my pack, you know, we kind of have a pack of a dozen or so common observations. We'll take from one inspection to the next. But then there's all this other information that we just completely glance over unless we have a detailed working knowledge of the regulations. Um, Paul, love the video. So I'm looking for some advice. I've been working as a theatre working, mainly with running distribution and generators. What's the first cause I should go for qualification? Um, so what are you looking to? Um, so you're obviously in the um, events industry. Are you looking to leave the events industry and go into more of a commercial industry, or advancing within the events industry itself? Hey, Adesan, thanks for that. <clears throat> do, 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 do. I haven't even tried this exam simulator thing. This is this is one that everyone kind of talks about. The Sparky Facts one. Maybe have a little play with that in a minute. Move to TV where they look for the Sparks card. Hmm. Brad. Are you on Facebook, Brad? I've, I've seen a guy on there with a knee injury lately. But yeah. No, I mean, yeah, the, I mean, the YouTube there should, should help most people, even if they are kind of sat at home. You back to work soon, though, yeah? Thoughts on the 60% pass rate and why so low? Why so low indeed? Um, I personally, if I when I deliver a training course, I do one practice mock. I don't kind of go, here's some content, here's some questions, here's some content, here's some questions. I go, here's a load of information. We talk about it out loud. And then at the end, just before we prepare it, I do one mock and I look for 80. If the guys don't achieve 80, then we're not ready for the assessment. I'll be honest, they always achieve 80. Um, I wouldn't be happy, I wouldn't be comfortable with someone um, getting anywhere near the 60 because it's it's doesn't i mean doesn't doesn't vouch for anything does it you know um it, it needs to be improved they but again this is saying that this is the problem with the uh the guilds and the eal and all of them really is um there's a sh there's a crap load of money to be made so why fix something that's already working perfectly for them um unless we see a downturn in standards through to this training, which we may do soon, because the training standards have really, you know, they really are poor right now. They really are. Back to GSH question. All right, all right. Yeah, GSH. What's he saying? Uh, would is that to me? Would you ever work for Napier or the NIC? I'm probably not the best ambassador for either of those, to be honest. Um, Depends in what role, what capacity. I would be interested in working with them from an angle of um, the assessments that are done on site with electricians. More so about 
how they standardize and control the quality of the assessments between their assessors, really. Um, training angle dangle, probably not. Uh, probably not. I, I I feel that there's a lot of um, messing around with competence there, um, and you know, interpreting it to suit their registrations. I wouldn't be happy with that. Hey, Mike, that helps. Thanks for that. That's a yeah. Just about finished apprenticeship. Is that a three or four year one? Is it sausage bap? Mm. Hey, I have Kievs for dinner. On the ECUK on Facebook, they've been talking about the requirements to have main bonding in place if required before carrying out any work. They say this doesn't apply to things such as changing the lights. Let me read that again. They've been talking about the requirement to have main bonding in place if required before carrying out any work. They say this doesn't apply to things such as changing a light. Changing a light as in what? Um, just changing a fitting, like, like for like. Suggesting it doesn't need to comply with... Uh, oh, God. One, uh, one, three, four. One three two sixteen. Additions, alterations to an installation. One three two sixteen. Is that what they're saying? Temporary permit made to an existing installation has been ascertained. The rating of the condition is agreement. Furthermore, I think the only time that I would say electrical work would uh, be safe when there was no effective um, earthing or bonding would be if you were doing demolishing and removing of the system. If you had any demand. At all, you're adding volt drop. If you're adding volt drop, then obviously you're affecting potential differences. And if you affect potential differences, that's my Rexburg hit the floor, uh, then you need to have effective earthing and bonding. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an argument I can understand. They just don't want it to be obstructive to some work, um, you know, such as changing a life fitting. Um, It depends on the characteristics to the circuit, I guess. All right. Yep, yep, okay. Do, do, do. Uh, one before. Uh, keep up the good videos on YouTube. Huge fan. Thank you very much. Slight topic, but what courses would you recommend for somebody aspiring to be an electrical designer? Um, phew. Well, I mean, obviously there is the 2396. I don't know if you've got that one already or if you're looking to that one. Um, Otherwise, there's a lot of bespoke stuff um, with regards to manufacturers. So try to try. The problem with investing money in that is you kind of direct yourself in one way only. Um, so first of all, approach understanding of the regulations, understanding of the design from the two, three, nine, six perspective. If you were to work in the design of a niche, such as Lutron lighting systems or things like that, then they'll have their own design platforms as well, which would be worth a bit of money and time into. But otherwise, there's so much free information that designers will give you as well, or some companies to tempt you to use their equipment. Dabble in some of that. Um, if you want to go further into the H&Z territory beyond that, maybe. There are design units on that. Here's a question. Capping or no capping when being plastered? Wall chases. I'll be honest, this is a time where I'll probably turn around and look at the plasterer and see if he can walk in a straight line or not. Um, I Capping, oval cap, oval conduit capping, keep it clean. It's just got to be protected while that while that guy's doing his thing. Really? Um, good practice to cap it. Although, hitting those nails in can half be tricky if, the, if, uh, if you've got the wrong brickwork. Four years apprenticeships, awesome, awesome. So was that the um, is that the new is that the two three, God five seven, or something equivalent? <laughs> Chis H, my first question, right in the race, you and your dad, why not? Um, because we we are we are we are not um, part of the gentleman's club, I expect, um, probably, and we have too much of a ethical opinion. Thought some car charging points installed on TNCS network and the requirements to install independent earth electrodes, which install the three core in earth, the DB, and leave disconnected at the. Okay. Um, so, like converting to a TT system, is that what you're saying? A bit like, uh, like the caravan park location with the outlet, is that? Just trying to read that carefully. TNCS network and requires to install independent earth electro. We just store three core and earth at DB and then leave this. Yeah. Um, 
I would try to distribute a protected cable, so I'd distribute a PME system to it, but I would not connect the PME earth into the charging point earth. Ideally, manufacturers would provide some kind of terminal or termination point for this earth, which should not be connected to the vehicle. Wouldn't that be nice if they were to do that? What do I think of Nipex Sugar Nips? Um, they, they sound lovely. Um, I guess what I'm checking for here. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't. I never really work with something that have such a fine blade on the end, but um, I think I had, I had something similar once. They were all black, and they would they would chew. I ended up using them as shears, like tin shears, uh, and they were good. But I honestly have no actual experience with those in the hand, so I can't really help with that one, I'm afraid. I uh, like a lot from. Uh, I went to Rosary Topping Pen to learn. Nice. This is more insane than Saturday night. Oh, I don't know what's on. Um, I normally spend my Saturday nights in here. So, uh, welcome to my world. You should do a weekly Saturday night. This is a, this is actually something that I'm hoping to kind of look into doing further down the line. Because we've got great characters getting online now. We've got, obviously, Gary. We've got Jonathan. We've got other YouTubers. But there are other electricians that I've talked about with doing... Um, getting involved either via Skype or even Discord. I've got a Discord server which I'm trying to set up for any of you guys young enough to know what that is um, to see if we can obviously go in there and do real-time chat as well. But I'm looking at getting some kind of weekly um, program built up, talk about industry stuff because I, I just think it's a good CPD opportunity. It's a good um, opportunity to kind of just get some things said, really. It also kind of puts a, a stamp as to where the hell we are in the industry at the moment. Do, 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 do. Uh, plastic capping won't stop her now. No, that is true. That is why, obviously, if the cable is buried less than 50 mil, you'd have to have an RCD. If you're going to go, if you, if you want mechanical protection because someone is going to go in with a nail, capping's not your friend. You want to obviously put that in a steel conjurer system, bury it more than 50 mil, or go with something with an earth sheath. Yeah, capping is not your friend for mechanical protection after the fact. <laughs> Fill it. I would not work the IC. I'd run it under ethical guidelines. I, I I would agree, Pop. I would agree. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Um, the sugar nips. I'm not. Um, if I if I see them when I'm at the next Alex, I'll have a look. They kind of look like little shears, little snips. They don't really look like they're gonna. I don't know if anyone else in chat has has um experience with them. Are they are they this? Are they this? Because that's what I've just googled and seen. Um, they look like something that will have quite a little, you know, quite a bite, quite a bit of strength. Um, but I, I personally haven't had them on at all. But if anyone else in chat has worked with those, let let it, let them know. Let let Winston know. Okay. Uh, Client tools is a great set of sugar nuts, but bad reviews across the board. Okay, that's interesting. Muscle in a six months working block of flats. Time for finish testing. 70 distance circuit must be 18. All right, so you six months working on a block of flats. Time for finish testing. Okay, well, if the installation was designed to the 17th edition, obviously, if it's been going on for six months, then the commissioning and the verification should be to the 17th edition. Uh, that's kind of where you're at with that. But do take on board any amendments to the 18th edition. Nothing really major. And you can always advise that. Uh, being an initial verification, you can always still recommend for it but right now you just need to certify it to the installation it was designed to Paul Meenan always uses conduit yeah, he does he does and um thank god he's now finished his living room you know don't I'm I'm, I'm unfortunately I'm not I'm 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 one of those electricians that kind of doesn't do much at home um I'm, uh, I change light fittings when she buys new ones
Dan Metcalf, any dealings with the HEA and the atrocious courses and content they offer? Uh, oh, not familiar with that. Hang on, buddy. Are they, are they actually an awarding body, are they? Hmm. Um, not looked at them, but I will, um, I'll, I've, I've got them bookmarked. I'll have a look, seeing if I see anything that's worth pointing out, I'll, I'll have a little chat about it. Do do. ECI coding would be an interesting stream as it seems to be a very cloud topic. This is actually, yeah, um, that's a very good, a good, um, point. Rattlehead85. Um, obviously, the NAPIT have worked with a few people, including Gary and myself, to produce the um, the new version of the Codebreaker book, which does have an awful lot of useful information. Um, but I do think we need to kind of, or if you do get that book, do pay attention to the introduction, which talks about risk, you know, assessing risk. And I think this is where a lot of people, they want to be told what to do. Um, and fundamentally, as, as the common person, you're the one taking engineering judgment on board. I've had many a time when I would do an observation or something, I'd give it a C2 and they'd go, oh, but best practice guy says it's a C3. And I'd just go, well, my signature says it's a C2. And I'll then show them that, you know, there's no one here, there's no one there, there are children using this equipment there. And I'd have to go through all those hurdles. But I think, yeah, um, I have, <laughs> it's funny. I've got my name in the Code Breakers book, but I actually haven't got the 18th edition. I've still got the, I've still got the Amendment 3. When I get my hands on a copy of it, um, I probably will do a, ch uh, a video kind of talking about observation codes and using that as a, an example. Because I don't want to say, do this, do that, and then say, uh, you know, not offer examples. And the, the Napier book's a good, a good example. There's the best practice guide, which needs an update as well. Um, if you're doing certification, I think, is it, oh God, what's their name? Uh, Electiform. They, they, they. I've not worked with them, but they appear very, very popular at the moment. And they've just introduced recommended observations, which you can adjust, which is a great thing. But they've introduced a little guidance on that as well. Um, but yeah, I do think it's an interesting idea for a stream. Um, I do have, and this might be an idea for a stream coming up. Um, I can't find it now, but I do have a, um, a document which is a bit similar to the 239152 uh, assessment with a, a load of illustrations with, um, you know, that, and then we'd make our own observations. So I think that's a great idea for a, for a stream coming up. We'll do an observation stream. We'll look at the pictures. We'll have a talk about the scenario and we'll see how completely disconnected we are with our understanding of the codes. Jamie, I've heard there's an error in the new book. Just the one? Can anyone clarify where it is and where do I find it? It's 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 probably uh, there are there are um, many. That's, that's probably another video because um, there are many little issues. There's issues obviously with grammar. There's issues without, but there are some technical issues as well. There are some technical issues, and especially with the um, guys no street even. There's 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 a difference in uh, oh God. What is it? It's improvement recommended and improvement required for the uh, C3s, there's even interpretation difference there. You know, so um, there are, there are, there, is a, there is a need to kind of um, do some content on that one. Uh, correct NIC advice, type or type ZRCD. I'm not sure it's what that's responding to, but that sounds good. Well, the capital protection installation with corrosive action of plaster enables it. Wants two way, oh, wants two way switching. All right, uh, okay, cool. Isolating transformers for car charging points, good idea. Well, you know, if you've got an isolating transformer that can put that load on, that demand on it, how is that not the best solution? You know, it might be expensive, maybe that's it. But yeah, if you can obviously get an isolating transformer that will put that suggested load on for a period of time, then that is the safest route that I can think of. I with a few others in my firm failed the 18th. I'm retaking on the 18th of January. I'm looking at my downfall was time management. Can you give advice on time management? Okay, well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll let you, I'll, I'll tell you what I say to everybody else. Um, if you have obviously gone through the training and you've got your exam, question number one, two hours to go, 
Question number one, it's scope related. Okay, well, it's gonna be that one. Okay, why look for it in the book? Why, why, why look for it? If you know it, there's a flagging system, flag it, move on. If you're the kind of person that needs to see every single answer in black and white to know that you're doing well, you're gonna put yourself under undue pressure. You're gonna run out of time. And you don't wanna be running out of time when you've got half an hour left and all of a sudden you're into part seven where every single question has the blooming section information there. Um, <clears throat> another thing I always say to people is if you've worked, let's say that you're in, I don't know, chapter 42 and you found a question on potentially against thermal effects and you go, oh yeah, 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 there it is, right. Don't do that, okay? Never close the book, keep the book open because the next question may be on the next page. It may be on the page before, it could be on the same page, all right? There are obviously sparky facts and things like that. There are these tools and these other methods that you can do. Um, what you need to do is obviously drown yourself out. But unfortunately, some people do just buckle under the pressure of exams. And this, is, again, is, I think, why a lot of training companies take that into a, into account. And they've, transfer, cha they've trans changed the training so much that instead of training the content, they're focusing on you as a person to bring an exam. Um, and that seems to be the way a lot of it has uh, converted to these days. But um, my advice is to, yeah, there's a flag system. If you know the answer, answer it. Move to the next one. If you didn't see it in the book and you think it's that answer, flag it. If you know it's that answer, what's the book for? Yeah, move on. If you find the answer in the book, don't close the book, all right? Try those and see if that helps you with your, um, with your pace, okay? Because... Time management is something that, unfortunately, it's very hard to train it. It's something that you kind of just have to repeat, repeat. And with pools and pools of question papers, again, I guess that's what they're trying to do, is they're just trying to make you more automatic, more systematic in your exam. Right. Um, Daniel, I've got to go now. Please upload the full stream. So, yeah, yeah. No, cheers, Daniel, for coming. Thanks a lot. Um, this is this is nice. Getting get loads of questions. I was, I was kind of wondering if anyone would actually have anything to say. Can you explain expand on requirements for car charging points? In what way? In the regards to the changes or the requirements of Section 722? Because I am going to be doing videos on the sections i've had a lot of people say can you actually do videos per section because it you know allows us to blow that up so i will be doing one on section 722 there have been obviously changes in there something that we need to know about electric vehicle charging points obviously is um common things like demand we can't we can't um we can't diversify the demand unless we have a specific control program in that for multiple multiple charging points the earthing system is the issue. Obviously, if we connect it to a TNCS system, we cannot take the earth from the TNCS system to the charging point, the, uh, and we have to convert that. There are a couple of solutions suggested. One of the solutions is using a technology that isn't actually manufactured yet, which is where it converts it. Um, so right now, the um, I think the practice that everyone is using, the engineered solution, is to convert it to a TT system. Okay, but um, 722, I mean, you have, have a look at it. Have a look in there. Um, I will be doing a video on that. But I'm, you know, if everyone's if everyone's up for streams, we can get Gary and that to come back. We'll do we'll do we'll, we'll talk more about this. Uh, we can do one of these every other week or so. You know, more than happy to come back and do more of these. Uh, are you not enjoying a beer tonight while streaming? Well, do you know I had a tea. Um. And I have, I have, I have, a, I have a darling wife. I think who's 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 feeding my baby right now. Uh, are you here, love? Are you in the chat? Just, you know, I am parched. You really know your way around the regs book. Uh, I well, picture this. Imagine that. Imagine imagine Monday morning. Your job. Is to go and stand up in front of ten or so people and talk regulations. Hello, my love. You're running very behind on your questions. I know, I know. I'm trying. I was doing a beer like 20 minutes ago. Well, well, where is it then? Can I have you a beer, one? please? Yes, please. Thank you. Love you. Um, imagine that you know your day is just talking regs, talking regs, and what 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 
without sounding modest, what good trainers are supposed to do is reflect on the learning, ask how it went, obviously seek development and evolve. Um, and that's like I always would do is I would always go to other people. I mentioned Learning Lounge earlier on, um, you know, and I, I had all their videos and I, 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 I go to all these places. And, and the funny thing is that this is the problem with YouTube. I've recorded this. I've put it up, I've put it online. Now when I'm in the classroom, I do things differently already because I've adjusted, I've adapted, I've evolved it. Uh, I've interpreted things a little bit differently as well. And so now I'm thinking, do I need to do a version two soon? And you know, so it is a bit of a problem, but that's it. The reason I know the way around the regs book is because that's my job, um, you know. Uh, and, and the problem with training all the time is you end up, you end up having a mother-in-law that needs a house to be rewired and you're thinking, crikey, where are my tools? You know, this is true. My, my mother-in-law has just bought a house down the road and it needs a rewire. And I'm like, you know, my, 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 I ain't got any tools anymore. Um, and I see, I see, uh, I see these YouTube videos of these chaps with these machines and these like this and these lasers everywhere. And I'm like, thank you, my sweet. And so, yeah, what I've taken, what I've taken on board in regulations, understanding, I have lost probably in actual practical abilities. Ah. Um. Cable step joints uh, down joints. We, right. Oh, cable cable step down joints. Would you see one step cable for exceeding three meters in length? Each end. Would you need this to be automated factored into the design or just additional to me? Would you see one the stepped cable for exceeding three meters in length? Or would this need to be ten meters factored in the design or just additional two meters per end? I'm struggling to understand the scenario, but if overcurrent protection is not afforded and it's beyond the required length of the the requirements of the regs three meters or so, then I would probably I would see to it because it's only danger subjected to a load beyond its rating, which is still obviously something that needs to be remedied. But I would see two and not see one because it's only dangerous potentially when subjected to a load. What election are you going to next? Which one are you going to, Gary? You probably already said it because I'm so behind in chat. Um, I I'll see about going to Ali Pay, but I've currently offered my date that, that week to a company to train. Um, they haven't taken it on, so I, I could take it back and go to Ali Pay, but. We'll see. Otherwise, I mean, Coventry's Coventry's a definite. That seems to be something that the E five guys kind of meet up to. It's kind of like where we all come to a middle. Um, but I mean, other than that, I do want to find some time to come down and see you again. I want to spend some time with your actual guys, a bit like um, like Tom did, you know. Because whilst whilst I come around and you know, for my own development, I'd like to come around and kind of see you guys do some stuff. Plus, you've got this new new kit. I want to come and have a play with that. Okay, where am I? All right, uh, la, 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 la. God, I'm behind in chat. Um, okay, uh, yes, yeah, the equivalent. Have you got any advice taking the AM2? I get a lot of questions about the AM2. I need to kind of look up into it because it may have changed a lot since I was last involved with that. Um, so I will do some. I'll do some reading up on it. But um, if I can get some good information, I will create some content to go on to it. But um, it is something that a lot of people seem to be looking for. So, yeah, I, I don't have anything practical on me right now. And everything I have on my files is probably over 10 years old. But I will, I will, um, there we go. AM2, that's on my list of things to look into because I do think we, some content on that would be rewarding for a lot of people. Uh, his exam is on the 23rd of Jan, your birthday. Oh, well, David, um, I'm, I'm happy birthday for them, mate. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll be fine. I'm sure you'll be fine. Crusty old electrical, electrician industrial age trying to find relevance of the regs and installations I tend to repair and install. You know, the people that can actually see a fault, break it down, rebuild it, they're a dying breed now. 
I did some um, I did some training with a food manufacturer, um, a farm producer as well. And these guys, what they could do with pneumatics and air and water, and I went to give them, I went to deliver them a little bit of training for mechanical electrical. But the stuff they could do with their hands was beyond belief. And I do believe this is one of the issues we have with training right now is there's a lot of technical training, technical, 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 but there's not enough time for skill development. Um, but I agree, I'm afraid. Let you should do it. I gotta come watch more. Gotta go. Thank you for your time. Have a good night. We'll watch the re. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for coming along. And uh, this will be a vod. Um, see if anyone sees any value in it. But yeah, we will do these again, and we'll see if anyone wants to join in. I don't moan about it. Shush. Uh, the rig's written for domestic installation work and nearly all the Civic and stuff for domestic. It does lean a lot to under 100 amps, I believe, like the on-site guide does. When you go beyond that, you do end up in a realm of unfamiliar territory with BS7671. I mean, you know, the cables are bigger in the Appendix uh, 4. That's about it, though. I'll agree with that. You have your name in code breakers as well. Yes, you do. What takes precedence? PS767 or manufacturer's instructions. Manufacturer's instructions should be to a more updated, robust standing method and will be to a more detailed technical knowledge, uh, technical standard. So the wine regulations would always say follow the manufacturer's instructions. If there was in any way a conflict between the two, you would obviously on your initial installation certificate or whatever, depart from BS7671 with support from your manufacturer's instructions. But they should take precedence. If there is a huge conflict, then maybe the equipment's not correctly selected. Any fastest instructions would normally take precedence, though. Thanks to GSH, I got the Codebreakers book. Oh, right, well. Well, yeah, well. I ain't got one. Got pay for mine, I think. Beer, babe, thanks, love. Oh, I submitted the pictures in the asbestos section. Was that of um, the, uh, the book, was it? <clears throat> Will I be doing more articles for Sparks Magazine? Well, um, yeah, I guess. Um, they did ask me to do something for the new term book. I can't remember if I did that or not. I think I did it very late. But, uh, I'm happy to provide some some uh, blogs or whatever if they want them. Um, you know, I try and keep them focused to apprenticeships and training. Having watched your videos, I realise that the way to go is to get your head around the regs book, thus enhancing your understanding. It's a very, 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 very good attitude to have because the way the way the industry has evolved in the past 10 years or so is you go through a door, you pay a company, they come and look at you, you wear their badge, you carry their badge, and now any time that something is questioned, they give you a handout and you follow their rules. Um, you know, you've got to maintain your own knowledge, your own discipline, your own competence. That way you're free to move around and go as you please. Um, and you know the client basically is relying on you to do the the right work and you know that, that's back where e5 comes in with um, the ethical principles so yes uh, and it's exactly why we took this approach with the wine regulations it's exactly why i decided to make it just on there i know i pissed a lot of people off by doing that um but everyone would be going to training courses and they wouldn't have a third uh, third person perspective and I'm not saying that my, my content is the best content. Far from that. What I am saying is it's expanded. It's, you know, it's it's, it's effectively detailed, I believe. As I've said already, though, I will be, I would like to change some things. Most definitely. I'm thinking about redoing a bit of um, SPDs and stuff because we get lots of questions on those. And I think that, you know, just simplifying it might be a benefit. <clears throat> hey, Chevrolet Wild Camper. Sounds good. Starting the 23152 on Monday. Can't wait. That's the combined one, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Um, you know. Assume you've got your guidance notes three. But do remember to um you know keep keep the uh keep the technical knowledge going on that. Nobody seems to know how to mark up a three phase TV. <laughs> uh yeah. Um, yeah, one, two, three, or one, two, three, or one, two, three. Uh, yeah, you, um, if, if you, if you, yeah, if you like to source something or someone that tells us exactly how it should be done, manufacturers need to see it because they don't, under, you know, they always confuse the issue on that one. 
What type of code do you recommend on an EICR with only AC type RCDs when you have rectal? Ah, oh, right, yeah. Well, as Gary says, type AC RCDs are now junk. We've got obviously an update in in the regulations, which is making us should be make us more aware of the diverse effect of uh, feedback on DC, uh, different types of RCDs, and uh the question would be if if it was um it could be improved you go C3 but if it's likely that that load which loads that you're saying um the rectified equipment if that is likely to trip that up um, trick the rcd to not operate meaning additional protection is no longer achieved if you've put that rcd in for additional protection and this equipment is going to potentially stop it working that's a potential danger and i would say that warrant a c2 okay so it's, it's down to interpretation of what the likelihood is of that equipment. Uh, thousand feet pound for the five to course. Is that uh, six six days? Hey, guys, the reason why you're here, how would you feel about doing some streaming? Either, you know, with me live or on your channel and I can kind of help with that. You know, I, I think people would benefit from it. Oh, where's my chat gone? Okay. Approved documents are free online. They are indeed. I should really check my versions to make sure mine are all update. Alright. Here comes here comes Father. The certs model forms state for domestic end up to 100 amp, but we can adjust and amend them to suit. Don't be afraid. Use your knowledge and judgment to adapt the forms to suit your needs. Yeah. We had this chat with, um, oh God. On Twitter, we had a little Twitter war. I had a Twitter war with, uh, was I certify? No, it was the other one. I can't remember. But obviously, they've created this frustra this uh, confusion in in um in Appendix 6 by having one column for the RCD times, times 1 or times 5. Which one should it be? And I said, well, we should have both. If we have an RCD for the purpose of times 5, we should be able to record that. If it's ever times 1, we should be able to record that. Um, and as Phil is saying, you know, the forms... There are temp there are minimum standard, but we should be able to expand and adjust them to suit the requirements of the client and requirements of competent practice. Take for example, um, things like uh, I mean things like um, BS seven nine oh nine temporary installations with that model form. We've got on the code of, on the schedule of test results on that model form a measured value of line to neutral prospective short circuit current at the end of the circuit. Okay, to verify that there's sufficient current in the line to neutral short circuit. Now, the way we install and design systems right now, we don't actually document that in final systems. It's assumed that it complies. Um, and unless we expand and check or verify our our full currents, you know, when we have parallels introduced, you know, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of times where we could be certifying systems that aren't actually as detailed or as documented because we haven't got the fields to record. Similarly, though, I think we have the issues with um, the methods of inspections and the schedules and the fact that we can just amount of times I look at a condition report and they tick every bloody box. You know, I had one. It was for a doctor's a doctor surgery, and they said that the, what the earthing system was a TNC system. You know, TNC system, which obviously shouldn't occur, um, and it had an electrode apparently. You know, and you just QS system. This is this this is the problem. Is the QS system has allowed this to take uh, allowed this to happen it's allowed this to carry on and we now have this big issue with competency on reporting any any tom dick and harry can go out and do the reporting and then that qs will sign it off and that qs will just not do the job properly all right um i wish i had a way to actually cash up where i was all right i think it should be free and accessible online well it's an interesting area because obviously We've done some work, Philip and I have done some work over in the UAE and the government over there actually fund and, and publish the document for free. Um, in the UK though we have this licensing arrangement with the BSI. BSI, wow, BSI is just uh, is an interesting beast. Um, you, you start looking at the structure and the actual, uh, you know, the layout of that that business. But they kind of, they kind of, they kind of cornered it. 
Um, but they license it right now to the IAT. There have been some competition. There has been some competition to obtain that license by other persons. Um, but it's a big money maker. It's a big money maker. But I, I do, um, I do agree. I mean, if you have the subscription service, that's that's kind of beneficial in that you kind of get it updated as it goes. I do believe if you have a subscription, did it just automatically update? I guess you're paying for that yearly, though, aren't you? So maybe that's not be be uh, better. I don't know. But yeah, I do think it should be accessible online, and I do think it should be. Would I say free? The thing is, I, I I often think that it's value for money when I look at all the other British standards that I end up reading, which are thirty pages and a three or four times as much in cost. Um, but yeah, there, there's 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 no. Yeah, they, they they should they should be more readily accessible, and I think that they I think that there should be a scheme where maybe like a, if we had and again if we had like a licensing arrangement where. X amount of our license fee went into the pot to fund the publication of these standards, then they'd be free for us. I think that'd be a lot better. Then everyone has access to the standards, and then there's no excuse for people not to have the information because that's one of the biggest hurdles right now. You know, I'll go to an installation and there'll be no no stand no you know no recognition of PS five two six six, and probably probably because the installation installer didn't want to pay for it. Right. Um, Paul, from my experience, the 18th edition questions are no longer in sequence in order in the book. My experience was similar because I did the exam right away. Now, when I did the exam right away, my very, very first question was all about ZS is equal to ZE plus R1 plus R2. It was that formula. And it was it was all muddled up. But then having delivered the course a couple of times, I think from the September, they were then back in order. But, the, you know, in part order. And I do believe they still are in part order, but they can jumble up in those orders. Um, I don't. I don't know if you're referring to a city and guilds or somewhere else, but from my experience, they are still in order. But again, if you shut the book between questions, you may find yourself going backwards and forwards. Dwayne Brown, I completed my edition exam the other day. I got eighty-five percent found answers in the book. Yep, that's how you do it. Well done, eighty-five percent. That's good. Craig, model form, specifically RC times, it's going to cause confusion for times one or time five, depending on what RC is installed. Yeah, obviously, domestically, we're looking mostly at times five because of the fact that the RCs are there for additional protection. But if we go to a agricultural, horticultural, construction site, medical, well, many other locations where an RCD is there for fire protection, 300 milliamp, or an RC protection is there for another reason, um, then it's the times one that we also need to be recording. And I've seen some people say, oh, but if it trips at times five, it will trip at times one, but that doesn't actually work that way. So yeah, I, I strongly think that um, the model form should be able to record times one and times five. Um, I am frustrated with the whole functionality checking for AFDDs and functionality checking for things, because as I as I said when we did the, um, the ramble with... Uh, the gas. Um, the requirement of a functionality check is not limited to just RCDs and AFDDs. Functionality must be verified for, especially initial verification, for all switch gear, all control gear, all variable equipment, and everything. So you know this should just be a box that says functionality, and that should encompass all of those, as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> cool, cool, cool. Um, be safe, London Electrical, Ben Saxby. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant to see people need to be getting together and educating one another. This is the start of ethical practice. Thanks. I mean, I'm I, I'm hoping that every time we do something like this, someone else is motivated to try this because we spent so long now following bodies, following training companies, and all of those are just cocking it up. I'm going to be honest now. They're all cocking it up. And we've got to start standing up. And... The guy, you know, some of these guys will say, you know, electricians are very, very, you know, they you know, just bitch about each other and all this stuff. And it's time to stand up and pick each other up and actually, you know, have some respect for our own standards, our own skill, our own, ins ins you know, our own abilities. And what's that? I've got my dogs coming in here. Hello, buddy. Um, and it's time for us to kind of, you know, 
regain respect for ourselves because if you think about it, training companies couldn't give a crap. The more people who have access to this industry, the more people who need training. The registered bodies, the more people who have access to this industry, the more people who need registration and quality control. Manufacturers of instruments, the more people who enter this industry, the more people who need to buy a tester. Wholesalers, the more people who enter this industry, the more people who need to buy shit. And whose interest in it is it for any of these, for the numbers of electricians to actually decline and the skill set to come back to being improved? So no one's interest except for the client who should finally start getting a freaking electrician again. You know, and that's the problem. We need to start, you know, ignoring these people who claim to be doing things in our interest because they're not. You know, people who are doing things in their interest are people who are actually just you know, the likes of Gaz, the likes of E5, the likes of many other YouTubers and people on Facebook who just want to support each other. Yes, I, I completely agree with it. Car charging points I installed, the first one live at Williams BMW for the launch of the i3. Oh, yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've seen, I've not actually, again, I said I've been off the tours a while and um, I've gone and seen them installed and, and helped test them. But I've not had the fun of actually... Uh, designing a system for it, but it's definitely an area that I'd like to kind of get more experience in. Hey, pup. All right, down you get. I have a dog jump on me in a minute. <clears throat> All right, uh, I can't do that. I bet your wife loves these night stalking regs. Do you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, for a couple of years now, you know, I'll be up at, Two or two o'clock in the morning, or whatever, and she'll, she, she'd have just given up and she'd go up to bed. She probably goes to bed earlier than that. And she'll go upstairs and she'll be hearing Tony Cable's voice or Dave Austin's voice from Learning Lounge, or she'll be hearing someone else and she'll just say, to Me, can't you put porn on like a normal person? You know, she's, she's very, very used to it, unfortunately. She knows what she knows, she knows who she's married. Cheers, Gary. And you know, we, we, we'll, uh, we'll carry on through 2019, mate. Hello, Mrs. David. Can you have a beer? See, what is this? That's all my Japanese beers. Bad install multiple charging points in the Mercedes garage. My music stopped. Wow, this is going on for a while. Um, <clears throat> Cracky, is this your response to when I answered that question earlier? Am I really that far behind? No, I'm not too far behind. All right. So, Gaz, you're going to Ali Pali, are you? Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks, Mike. When's Ali? I'm going to try and go a bit quicker. Uh, great, so Gary's working on some AM2 and AM2's content. Well, I'm probably going to take advantage of that and just let him do that, and then I'll probably pop in and be nosy and make one little video for me on it. Is the AMT worth the paper it's written on? I was always told it's not a recognised qualification. It's an um, endpoint assessment. Um, so the idea being, I mean, bear in mind when I was more involved with it, you'd had a blank wall, you'd have a, you know, one or two lengths of conduit trunking, and then you'd have to bend it and fabricate it and do all that yourself. Now I believe it's prefabricated, which means it's a bit easier. But what it is, it's a assessment of performance. So. We have obviously the technical training at college, and then we have the MVQ, which collects performance evidence by these assessors that go around taking photo shoots. And then the AM2 is like a a um, impartial third body um, that's going to then just assess you as a performer to do an installation on the wall to test it. And then you get that; it kind of ties the bow. Um, it's an important thing, and it's something that I, I I would actually like to have a go at myself actually soon. Yeah, Thursday, 31st of Jan. Hopefully my love has seen that. Um, yeah, I'm currently booked in, but I'm, I'll am i email them and see if I am uh, if I'm if I can be free for it. Yeah. Real ale or lager? This is... Babe, is this the Japanese blue one? Yeah. Yeah, this is a Japanese beer. Blue, it's it tight, I don't know. It's not the red one. The red ones are made of, from rice. I don't know. It's Japanese. Japanese beer. What do you think about those four-week domestic installation courses to run along other trades? Kitchen fitness, bathroom fitness, design off and works. Hmm. That would require a three-hour conversation and me moaning. 
Um, I used to work for a company that was doing these. I used to be the person who tried to improve the quality of these. I was also the person who was slammed down for trying to be awkward and making them better. Um, put it this way, um, without going into too much detail, Gary, GSH Electrical, trains domestic guys over two, two or three years or so, and he has probably a 50% odd fail rate. You know, he, people fail, you know, because he trains them properly and he says, if you don't hit my bar, you're done. These other companies have a very, 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 very low fail rate. And they have four weeks of training, and I mean, I'm gonna do. I can do another stream where I just go through the content of one of these courses. The problem, the problem is, the problem is, the industry has opened a door, and it's it, nobody. Anyone who does these courses, it's not. It's you know, the door's been opened, and they're going through the door. The problem is the control of that afterwards. And when we look at what's happened now, we've had ten or so years. Of every week, new persons are entering the industry who are now competent in the eyes of the CPS. You know, if you go to electrical safety first, they'll tell the public you must use a registered electrician, and that means go to the database of four-week electricians or four-week domestic installers. Um, and it is it's a big, big problem. And we've raised we've raised some awareness of this through to the government. We've had some very positive feedback, and there has been a lot of manipulation of the um, the standards that are required with the electrotechnical system specification, interpretation of two years of experience. But just to summarize it now, my opinion is the training's there, it's an industry that exists, it cannot be removed. So the persons who have gone through that have gone through that because it's there. I want to make sure that those who go through that know where their abilities stop and then there's more opportunity to develop that. All right. Basically, City and Guilds they never released a Part P training course. They had the they had the two three nine three, which was the electricians building rigs course, but that wasn't Part P. And when all this came in, the government got involved. It went to Ofqual, the regulators of of, of of the qualifications, and they said, right, we needed to create an MVQ for domestics. So like we have the MVQ right now for industrial, they had to create an MVQ for domestics. And I believe that's what Gary delivers right now, uh, the 2397. Now, I created that with the company I was working with. And I was saying to them, well, yeah, these guys are going to have to come in, in, in into, into the training center either you know, full time for about 16 weeks, or we're going to have to spread this over two or three years with some portfolio collection. Um, the, problem with the problem with that time when that was implemented is we'd be saying that to people coming to us, but the NIC and the NAPIT and the etc. They would just take people through into their system without it. So we couldn't implement it. You know, that's why I was very impressed to see that Tresham College still do it. Um, we couldn't implement it because if, if, a come, if a person comes to us, we say you must do this. It's going to cost X, Y, thousands. It's going to take a year or two. They'll then call their, the NIC who will go, oh, no, 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 come and do this course, five days, and then we'll come and assess you at your cost three or four times, and you're done. Um, this is a this is an ongoing problem that we still have right now. We have, obviously, we have these, these guys saying there's a skills shortage. We haven't got a skills shortage in that. Well, we have a skills shortage, but we don't have a electrician shortage. What we have is a shortage of skilled electricians because many of them have come into the industry and they've not been offered that support they've not been offered that opportunity to develop to train to gain experience some of them have been trying to get experience for free and the industry is the industry is completely mucked it up but i'm gonna i'm gonna I, I need to come back to that with a whole separate video and we can even do a stream on it because i need to carry on before i run out of time what time is it okay we'll go on for another 15 minutes or so um, what's your view on SPDs? Am I right in thinking we should be fitting these to all new circuits in domestics and commercial? Right, the way it's written in the 18th edition is this. There's a list of four thing, four or so things that require an SPD. Okay, so if I go to uh, protection against over voltage, 4-4, four, four, it's got there. 4-4, uh, 3.4, four, four, over voltage control. So we need them if the consequence would result in injury to or loss of human life 
result in interruption of public services or damaged cultural heritage, result in interruption of commercial or industrial activity, or affect a large number of co-located individuals. Co-located individuals could be, for example, the service to the communal lighting in a multi-story block of flats. You know, if that was to go out and you know you didn't have any overvoltage control on that, and everyone would be vulnerable to escape. So those are the musts. Now, if you've not got one of those musts, the next question is, right, are you domestic? If you are a domestic single dwelling, it says in there, you do not need to consider SPDs because it's likely that the value of SPDs installing them would would, would outweigh the value of damage that an overvoltage could, could create. Now, if you're connected, however, to a TT system in a more rural location, it's more likely that if lightning was to strike the TT system, you would be subjected to that overvoltage. So you may start increasing the requirement for SPDs and domestics there. If you're in a built-up town, it happens sometimes, but it'll be few and far between. When I was on the tools for a social housing company, we had two lightning strikes, and those were actually bungalows that had an aerial that was about 12 feet in the air to reach over the houses around it. Um, so they're very, very few and far between. If it's not a domestic then, we have to do that risk assessment, that CRL, the um, calculated risk level, which is the formula in the new book. If we do that and we determine that it does not need it, then the business, the industry, the multiple occupancy dwelling doesn't need it. If we do that and it does, then we do. So do we need it in domestics? Not single properties. Bear in mind, though, I have seen some manufacturers say, but our SPDs are only 80 quid, and that person's TV is three grand. Um, they want us to put SPDs in. So the book doesn't say you must. Talk to your client. If you're going to a home and you're thinking about it, just be honest with them. Say, this device costs this, and it's going to, should, should prevent overvoltage uh, damage to your equipment. Um, it's up to them to determine it then. But if you're beyond the domestic, then you start risk. You have to risk assess. All right, where am I? God. I'm trying to find where I was. Uh, there we go. Okay, right. I pay for my code breakers book as well. Thanks to its recommendation. Yeah, I've um. I've actually just not found the time to pay for it. I'll maybe get it now in a minute, actually. Fit two smoke alarms today linked. Why are they so fiddly? I don't know. Um, so you're putting in there a, a, a 1.5N and a 3 core on. I'm trying to think what we have here. Well, I've actually got some here. What have I got here? Oh. Ico EI164s. That's obviously, yeah, because the connection's in there. There's a, there's a bit of space, but, um, I mean, I don't know if you had Icos. There's definitely not, for a cable to terminate in there, there's not a lot of space to manoeuvre. I'd agree with that. Uh, my issue with motor alarms really is the, the alignment afterwards. But, uh, I should I should really put these in. We've got loads of battery ones in this house. I bought them, I meant well. Uh, been advised to produce a document waiver to hand to domestic client to sign against fitting SPDs. I'll be fitting all major work, but this is something worth doing for those major uh, minor work. Been advised to produce a document waiver to hand to domestic to sign against fitting SPDs. So is that to say you're not having them because, or you should have them because? Begins with a ICO, I think, probably. Uh, just saw the new Code Breakers 2 book from Test Meter. I think Test Meter is, uh, isn't that, na isn't that Napit store? Because I, I ordered my regs book through Napit and it came from their office. So I think Napit have like a thing. But yeah, Test Meter, um, good company.
Uh, just bought QTech KT sixty four second hand. I had a KT sixty four. Um, my wife bought it for me for my birthday. Ooh, five five six six. Oh, crikey, many years ago. Um, it was stolen. It was uh, stolen while at work. Um, and I was gutted. Um, the the only issue. Well, I don't know about the DL, but the only issue I had with the KT sixty four was the backlight, because if you were standing square to it, it was fine. But if you went like that. It kind of faded really, really quickly. Um, so I don't know about the DL if they've improved the backlight screen on that. Um, as a as a test, it was really, really good. We used the Qtex uh, KT65 and we used the Qtex KT63 with our, our um, 7909 courses. Um, I don't know why. Um, it's just the one that Phil Watts uh, issues. Um, the old man when 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 we, when we do that one. Um, I've got in this office right now. I've got I've got. A Fluke pat tester down there, and I've got a QTEC KT71 pat tester. And I've got some abominable blue multifunction tester, and I've got a Mega. Um, my Mega's down there, 1720. I probably should upgrade it though soon. Don't know what I'd upgrade it to. Right. Gary, we are building now a rig pointed towards AM2. Is fancy coming down to produce some videos? Yeah, yeah, I will. I'd, um,. I'd be interested in coming down. I have to. My my diary for January and February. I, I should have paid more attention to the fact that I want to do other things, but these companies just snatched me up, and I need to kind of clear some of that up because I'd like. I don't want to wait until March to be free. But yeah, I'd um. Yeah, no. I think I think I think doing some stuff live would be great. It'd be really fun. I know uh, Mr. Meenan's been cracking on with his uh, his uh. He's been sending me pictures this afternoon of his um, his setup. He's he's getting it all sorted out, and he's gonna have some quality um, content for clients. He speaks a language which I just I don't hear anyone else speak. It's really really good. Right, they do stop you busting the plastic on MCBs. You meant to have them calibrated every year. <laughs> True, but at least you know you're tightly manufactured. Does anyone have them calibrated? I just really didn't realize I was tightening way too much on a normal screwdriver. Okay. Oh, I was writing about QS systems. Yeah, yeah, he's a uh, he's on the ball with that. Actually, he's he's been he's been, he's been quite neat. I think he's had a good I think he's had a good Christmas. I think. Why is there a difference in maximum trimming times to PS four two nine threes, LSDs, and system double eights? Um, that's a bloody good question. So. Off the top of my head, uh, 14 3 is that the 200 millisecond and 6008 is the 300? Or have I got that wrong? Um, I can only assume it's just a different standard. Obviously, it's a, um, obviously the 1403 is the old British standard. The 6108 is the British European norm standard. And I should imagine the the test standard changed. I, I can't think of any other reason, to be honest. But it does, it's important. I mean, it's good that you, you're pointing out that there are different times because you can sometimes go to a site that's got a mixture. And so it's always, you know, yeah, it's one of those things that um, good inspectors will be on top of. Right, love your dedication to quality training, mate. Long make it to you. Thank you, Paul. Um, yeah. Um, hope, hope, <laughs> hopefully I'll still be employable if I carry on doing doing uh, the free training. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, what be a standard use used on cultural building like churches? Ooh. Not sure the top of my head. I've got a guy that would know, but I think he's out. He's not logged in. Um, Okay, having just slightly Googled, not like, you know, um, conservation of cultural property indoors. I should imagine it might be something like that, um, that there'll be a minor speck of electrical interpretation with regards to that. But no, that's an interesting question. So I will uh, I will have a little look see into. I don't know if I can get hold of this BS standard under my subscription, but. Conservation of cultural property, indoor climate, guidelines for heating churches, chapels, and other places of worship. So that's the heating. 
Uh, it does include electrical systems on that one. And what's this one? It's, oh, that's the same one. But then there's this one, P516. Structures, timbers, construction materials and buildings, other standards. Yeah, well, my immediate answer was, I don't know. <laughs> I googled and found this one which refers to heating systems and then I found this one which refers to tangible cultural heritage but there'll be something that will have a bit of electrical content now I don't think there'll be anything that's specifically blown up for electrical under a British standard I think there'll be um you know the British standard will be about the overall and there'll be a mention on the 7671 and this um I could be making this up I will I will I'll do a bit of digging on that one all right, thank you, thank you. Um, there's Pop. The old 4293s didn't always recognise the reverse side of the AC waves. Operating times are different. Is that why? That's cool. Thank you for that. You are useful, aren't you? Okay. <laughs> did you have the interview regulations book when you did the test? You know I didn't. <laughs> But I saw the 80th edition earlier through through J Bell. But no, I didn't. I had uh, my my book arrived. I think and Napit were like slow because Napit got screwed over with the stock, um, and I got my book on the 12th, and I did the exam on the um, sixth. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show you it though, because I'm not. Gonna, I'm not gonna brag. But yeah, I don't see. You can calibrate. Can cal you can you you can use calibration can like you do for your test meter. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, late 18th edition exam is in order. Yes, yes. Um, I did. It's funny. It's funny. Whoa, loads more chat just popped up. Um. Okay, Mr. Bean is here as well. Okay, hang on. I lost, I lost, I lost. God, I'm so far behind. All right, I'm gonna have, Jesus Christ. This is just all loaded up for me. I didn't realize we were so far behind, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna rush to catch up. Otherwise you'll be talking, you'll be chatting, and I'll be talking about other things. All right, um, so the EAL 80th edition exam is in order. Interestingly enough, I, I, I delivered the EAL the other day and half of the guys, the exam has at the bottom um, section one, two, three, four, five, and that's all. But the other guys had the, actually it told them part one, part two, part three. So I believe they're in the middle of migration. I believe the actual secure assess EAL, the questions tell you what part they're from. Now um, it was it was funny because as the invigilator, I, I kind of said to them, I said, well. Is this fair? Because some of the guys have the exam telling them which part this question is from, and some don't. But um, e EAL, uh, yeah, they are in order. Okay, uh, I need to. I, I'm gonna. I'm, I apologize if I'm gonna miss any questions, but I need to go faster. What form filling software do I use? I actually don't. I use pen and paper. I worked with a company that used Amtech, and I hate them for it. I lost hours and hours and hours of my life losing information. I couldn't. I couldn't couldn't recommend Amtech. Um, if I was to try one tomorrow, it would be Elective Form because I'm interested in the fact that they're always trying new things and they're always being creative. So I would, if I was tomorrow to go back on to do an inspection that I use software for, I would try Elective Form. Your FD one you did in the cable group is very good. Keep trying to. Thanks. I've I've. I kind of I kind of went into a bit of retirement the last few months of the year, um, just work and busyness. Uh, but I'm trying to, you know, I'm pushing a lot more now, and I'm going to try and get some consistent content out there. Um, I'm also trying to make sure that we all have our own bits of content going on as well. I don't want to make I want to make sure I don't copy any guys on it, but we're doing our best. Um, oh, what's this? Uh, Mark Barnett, let me just show you this. Um, and you're only allowed to use it for worse stuff. You can mess your colleagues and a few sparkies and all that. Okay, I'm not sure what I was referring to, but it was hiding, so I just thought I'd show you that. Seeing Girls is still not smashed. Uh, it's still still smashed it, though. Okay, great. 
Surprising to appreciate you might Pros found the Wii one of the best. Do you know a lot of people are uh, are pushing Wii, and I and my last screwdrivers and stuff was Irizola. They're the ones that were nicked, but I should I should really invest in some new stuff. I might go, you know, I might go back on the tools soon. Can you put porn on like a normal person? Yes, that's what she. Yes, yes, yes. she does say that. Right. Um, what does Part P registered mean? When well, actually Part P registered, I just right. Part P registration means that you're obviously a member of a common person scheme, and you're on their register, and you're pre-assessed and pre-approved through magic and wizardry to be competent on behalf of the client, and you'll never do anything wrong. All right. Uh, are there any BS7909 videos? There would be if Mr. Philip Watts would actually let me make them when I went to work with him. Unfortunately, he's a slave driver that does not let me make content when I go and do work with him. Hopefully he's hearing that and he will remember next time I work with him to do some sign-offs to make some time for 7909 stuff. Because, you know, he's got all the gear. Right. What sort of 7909 videos do you want? Oh, there you go. There he is. Say it. What do you want? Yeah, um, I have told him to get onto that one. Oh no, it's like three years to do it. Good God, you're right. I really need to, I really need to speed it up. He's responding to a quick thing because uh, there seems to be very little about the seven nine nine. That is true. Right, hello, Louis. Thanks. All right, do you think you're going to start trading those three years? Two, right? You know, okay, right. About three years to Feel, uh, so I'm still learning after 45 years. Yes, you are, Pop. Hello, Paul. Good to see you. Good evening. I am so far behind this chat. I really... I, right. So what do I think about E5? <laughs> well, I think that we need to actually make more public presence and more content. So we'll have a, a chat in the next couple of days and see when we're ready to do that. But I agree. When you sat with Gaz and you had the ramble, I do think that we need to kind of refresh up the video and get some more of the members to say what they think about E5 moving forward. So we can give it more of a more of an ambition for it. Okay, great. Um, good season nine. Oh no, it's a huge need for SP at work as of late. Two recent over voltage events. That will happen. Obviously, the problem is we're getting so creative with the utilization of systems, the design of systems, over voltages, transients. <sighs> Even harmonics, they're going to start happening. Um, and these, these little toys, these. Um, how's your multi nine stuff going? Is that is that your Christmas tree? Is that is that still going all right? Before the end, I like that. Okay, what's this three three? Cheers, Gaz. I'm hoping that you know we can we can get you to host one soon. This is this 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 has gone pretty well. I've had no time to do anything other than talk, which is actually what I wanted. I took the time. I took the two three three zero, or no, I took the two three six zero. I used to train the two three three zero. All right, I took the two three three at the time, level one, two, and three. What else do I need to be qualified domestic installer? Well, I mean, the two three three zero would have been the full thing, so you shouldn't need any defined domestic installer training whatsoever. No problem, no problem. Come on, guys, you're next. Uh, thank you very much. This live chat's helped a lot. Oh, great. I, I'm sorry I've not been able to keep up with it. Yes, uh, Ninja Dog, uh, Dallas, he's he's left now. I would have I gone on my lap, but he's a, he's a fat dog. Right. <laughs> he's with he's with, he's with that. Any chance we can do the interview here? We can, Paul, but you're going to have to write it and talk about it because that's an area that you... Vastly uh, more uh, knowledgeable than me, buddy. <laughs> well, I don't know. You're, to be honest, the way I'm going through chat, you've probably he's probably gone to bed. He's probably woken up, had breakfast, and I'm probably still here talking through this chat. So you're probably back by the time I've read this. Right. Paul's got his sub going. More than happy to use other testers. Anyone wants to donate them? <laughs> Pop. Although actually, I am really. Pop or anyone knows how to get. I, I'm trying to find a power supply that can do about 100 amp that I'd like to borrow, so I can do some examples to help support that group video. I've had some people comment on the grouping videos that they've seen it, but I'd like to try to, you know, to see if I can demonstrate it happening under full load. Maybe, maybe Mr. Ward could help with that actually. 
The next January, yeah. Um, that's the next one coming up. CBS advising all domestic clients to sign a waiver when they don't want SPD due to cost worth doing to cover one's ass. I think fundamentally the most important thing is client awareness. Um, you know, there's new devices, new technologies. Do make sure, I mean, this is like that hopefully E5 will get more involved with. We'll probably make some videos with E5 that you can then, for your client, just say, look, here's a video that kind of offers you a impartial bit of information on it. Give the clients more understanding. I mean, I know that most clients will say, I don't want to spend that, I don't want to spend that, but at least then you can say, right, I showed you diligence, I provided them the right information, and then you can get a waiver signed, you know, to say that they've been properly informed. But we are in that realm right now where costs, I mean, these new, these AFDDs, um, you know, the, we, we saw that we saw the price of them at um, just over 200 quid for AFDDs as a per circuit device. It's batshit crazy. Uh, now we're talking about churches. Crikey, I am so far behind. All right. Trying to keep you awake. It's a full-time job. That'd be too. Right. What do I think about the single technical certificate, technical certificate, electrical installations, 8202, level 2 and 3? Without running out of time and actually looking at the handbook I can't give you an actual answer on that I should imagine that it's a, a current pace of a lot of criteria of the other courses plus something else sprinkled on top um, if it's you know if it's an off-call qualification with City and Guilds and the end result um, is is level 3 then it should be fine mm -mm -mm -mm. all hates Amtec too Cheers, guys. Uh, E5 rocks. Yes, it does. Any opinions on Dialog MFTs? Do you know they new one? They came. They had a new one, obviously coming out last uh, latter end of last year, and the the rep in the area. I said, can I kind of have a look at it? And he was like, no. I was like, oh fine. But I wanted to just have it to play because the screen looked impressive and the settings looked impressive. I used to have um, the Dialog Part P tester. Um, thanks. Just tell him I've caught up. But I, um, it was it was called a part P test of crying out loud. So I, 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 it was a good little machine. But um, I haven't I haven't played with the Dialog MFTs. The screen looks impressive. Um, don't know uh, if it's I mean if it's your first tester, um, as a first instrument, uh, if it's affordable, then then go for it. I think I think I don't I, I don't think we ever buy our best tester. Our favourite tester as the first one. Um, just make sure it's one that you can work with. I mean, the first. I mean, I, I, I when I was doing testing, my, my first instruments were the 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 black case with the yellow bricks, the yellow robin bricks in it. Uh, that was my first test set, and I love those things. But then um, when I worked with a local authority, they got this blooming robin. No, sorry, this fluke. It was the first fluke MFT, and at that time, the leads. Were made of this silicon the second you let go of them they would just do this knotting thing and you spend half your work in life trying to split the bastards uh and it'd make this stupid noise which you couldn't turn off and i didn't really like that um i moved over to the mfts uh, sorry the mega mfts the 1500 series um i then upgraded them to the 1720s i've, I've played with the qtex as well to be honest to be honest it, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. The instruments are only as good as the person who's using them. Um, so go go with the dialogue. If you like the look of it, uh, get it in your hand. Get Go to a wholesaler that's got it. Get it in your hand. Play the buttons. Understand how to navigate it. If you haven't got to press too many buttons between tests, then go for it. I'm sure it's fine. Um, for the cut of the, di the dialogue, I get the KT63. We use the K... For the cost of the dialogue. Yeah, we use the KT63. It's a very good um, machine. It doesn't have... Um, Three phase rotation, I don't think. I think it's like a domestic kind of reach, but we use it with our 7909. Um, so, in fact, does it have phase rotation? No, we use the KT65 with the phase rotation part, and we use the KT63 for the running around, uh, finding the ends, and testing ZSs and PFCs part. Uh, but it's a very nice little handheld machine. Do -do 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 -do. Um, 
Makes the body make things better for us all. Well, you know, um, you're all doing it because you're all here talking and chatting. You know, I could easily be here talking to myself, which is kind of what I thought would happen. Um, so it's only because you guys kind of want to come out and actually talk. I'm, you know, I'm just a guy drinking the beer in the middle of it. Okay, we're near, we're near the bottom now. Great. Um, are we best to fit only our CPOs now? Um, if you think about things like division of installation, it's better. If you think about things like um, the cost of them is much more affordable, yeah. Um, if you think about ignoring SPDs and AFDDs, then yeah, I'd say so. If if you know if if it's realistically in the cost, then it should be fine. Um, when I moved into this house, I still need to do some work in this house. The uh, the previous uh, the previous occupier was a a contractor slash builder slash I don't know, but the electrical system is just a complete spider web of cables. And so the first thing I did was rip out the old 3036 board and I put in this is back when MK were good. Uh, put in an MK board with all the RCBOs in, and I, I and it's still there, it's still there, it's still going. Do 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 do. I did it yet. Still What appropriate correction factor in cable selection subject? Uh, what is an appropriate correction factor in cable selection subject? Well, that depends on the circumstance, doesn't it? Really, um, bunching, grouping, buried. John Ward. John. John. John's always. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Hello, John. Um. I believe uh, you've had a chat with uh, Mr. Meenan recently. Going to do some wonderful things with AFDDs. Hopefully, that'd be great. <coughs> what do you think about single pole RCBOs? Clearly, not brilliant as a neutral. With all clear though, these please put in. What do you think about single pole RCBOs? Clearly, not brilliant as a neutral. I thought would not be cleared through. Mm, yeah. Um, haven't we kind of got to the point where we're just we, we've got double poles now, aren't they? Like more readily available now. You know, for tested purposes, that that would be better, wouldn't it? Fire rate clips inside trunking. Do they apply for low level horizontal trunking and vertical drops? Low level. Okay. Uh, vertical. Well, again, this would be down to if that low level system, the vertical drop, is in any way inhibiting, or if that was to collapse and then bring across the room the wiring system that would then cross the path of um, anyone or a firefighter in a in a evacuation or a search and rescue so we say obviously falling from a height if it's if it's if it's low level if it creates trip hazards and things that would be something worth considering but most likely low level or vertical drops you probably would get away with it but don't try and get away with it do make sure it's a good consideration it's got to be a good consideration of the likelihood of entanglement Robin Yellow Bricks were the best ever. They were, yeah, yeah. John Ward's watching Legend. Yes, he is. He is, and uh, he's. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna do um, something else. Mr. Mr. W and uh, Big Clive. They were, they were the two that I used to watch a lot, and they were the ones that kind of convinced me that, you know, anyone can kind of put stuff on YouTube if they feel that they want to put it on that. Gary likes Mega. I think you've got a friend who works with Leg Mega, but I do have to agree. I do have to agree. They are um, they're good, but it's it's it's. I think it's good for everyone to have their hand on a different machine. It's always good to try out things. But although I'd like to, I'd actually your 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 buddy. I'd like to I'd like to try out that. Um, I watched the video he did where he talked about the um, the ZSs and how. It was saying how the, the circuits were noisy, so I might it might be worth yourself or Joe or me kind of doing some content on what noisy means and what creates noise and things to kind of link with that video, guys, because you know he didn't kind of talk about what noise was. But did he actually? Has he given you a seventeen forty at your college? Is he? Right. All these guys can't be allowed to be insane at the same time. Oh, it'd be like when I meet up with my old man. We just talk about electrics. It's so sad. 
really in a review of the Tesla some years ago. The opinion was we wanted to take the best bits of the Mega q -Tech and Fluke and mash them in the one. Dog small bits. Loving it. Good. Great. Good, yeah. So, Paul, you're going to come and do some content. Right, I have reached the bottom. I'm at the bottom. Thank God. Right. Oh, God. Are plastic wall plugs compliant against premature collapse? Everyone seems to have a different opinion. That's because everyone has a different opinion. Um, when I did some reading up on it, and I did a video in my channel with regards to the uh, history with the events and the firefighters and stuff, um, Beamer did a uh, building... Uh, God. Research establishment. What the hell are they called? I can't remember. BRA, Building Research Establishment, it was them. Um, they did the tests, and they actually did some tests on PVC, and a couple of the red rule plugs did fail for a... I can't remember the temperature, and I can't remember how long, but a lot of people have taken information. They've said, yeah, but that was too long. And they were saying, yeah, but it's all about premature collapse, and they're trying to define what premature means. They're trying to define premature. Um, and... From my perspective, you can't define premature as 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, because if a fire is raging and you've got a plastic, a red rule plug, and you're going to say, oh, well, it'll be okay for 20, 30 minutes. So, you know, it's going to have premature protection. There are some circumstances where a fire authority probably wouldn't go into a building until 20, 35, half an hour after a fire started, because, you know, they arrive and they actually liaise and they verify the head count and then they recheck the head count and they realize someone needs to be searched for and they then you know discuss how to go into a building so i mean phil watts in the chat he, you know he, he used to be a station off at station a commander for a fire brigade i mean he'll tell you they don't run into a fire a burning building straight off the wagon you know there's a bit of management there's a bit of assessment there's a bit of risk control to do and sometimes it'll be a long time before they go in. So, and this is where we have this division. Um, some people say, oh, you know, red rule plugs are fine because premature collapse must be within 20 minutes. And then beyond that, it doesn't matter. It's not premature. Um, I think if we take that argument and we go to the fire authorities, they would come back with something different. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. Um, so, yeah. And if you go to things like Lydia and noise manufacturers, they're coming up with these solutions. We don't need the red rule plugs, uh, to be fair. Um, you know, if it's important, if it's worth considering, we don't need them. So, uh, but yeah, I, 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 that, that's my take on it. That's my take on it. Not yet. No, seventeen forty-one. What is your buddy? Hello, Claire. Why is Stuart making you watch me on a Saturday night? I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more about John. Um, you know, he's, 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 anytime there's been an issue, John's kind of just, you know, even things like the Eddie Currents and stuff, he's gone, right, let's have it. And he's gone out and he's gone to his garden. He's set fire to things and he's he's proven them to, he's you know, he's, he's really challenged things in the industry and ripped some pieces of crap apart. So, no, uh, you know, YouTube, for, for electricians, YouTube would be a very dull place if people like John Ward weren't on it. That's for sure. Right. Ask a nurse about premature. Yeah? Okay. All right, this says to be everyone giving positive input, no one giving it a bit one quality. Man, two, right. All right. As a firefighter, your efforts, dedication, ensuring the danger of premature collapse is greatly appreciated by us all. Oh, that's great. So, thank you, Carl, for the feedback on that. Um, it's some, you know, I mean, we need to take into account what's happened, and if our methods, well, not our methods as electricians, but if contractors and commercial work at methods has resulted in these dangers, you know, we still expect firefighters to just run in. Um, we've got to take, you know, we've got to do our bit. All right, um, RCOs all the way and spot load boards with Type A. Yes, in modern installs better than no nails. Your thoughts on incorrect rule selection of RC? Okay. Your thoughts on oh you're right so I suppose all the way rather than split load boards type A C R C S and modern stores better with it. Oh, well, no. your thoughts on the incorrect rule selection of R C D well I think R C D selection is something that we need to um, we need to do some content on don't we we need some content on that um, speaking of which who's got who's got your rig someone's got someone who's got your rig now because 
get some, get some, get some, get some content out of that rig. John Wall, any current smashed it? He did, he did. Um, and I, actually, I need, I need to, I need to message on what kind of power supply he uses. I need to generate a power supply like that. Right. Of all the fusible fires, London Fire Brigade, do we know how many were installed by Sparks and how many by others? Limitation of the data. All we, all we can see is the relationship between um, fires and time. And there is a similarity from my, I mean, uh, and this is a very, very honest perspective, because um, in the training industry, I was obviously working with an FE college, seeing guys going through three years of training and I was also working with a private training company and seeing guys go through four or five days and quite often they'll be saying so can I can I can I do work now can I can I can I can I the mind you know can I work in people's homes they they didn't feel as if they'd gone through that journey and some of them still um well many of them to be honest that I'd see would 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 feed back to me or they'd get a, you know we'd say that you need to get some experience before you start taking it on by yourself but we did see a relationship between the um the changing in training standards uh which would obviously represent the um the changing in registration and entry to the industry standards and the numbers of fires but who's to know who's to know bear in mind that when these fires were increasing part p was already in effect so the work in the home was already under statutory control so the fires increasing were during a period that statutory control was already in place part p was already in place part p wasn't after the fact it was, you know, so that that's one of the, that's one of the awkward things about it. All right, um, Pop, what's he saying? You ignore my comment about meaningful 18th edition training and courses rather than where's Wally courses we have at the moment. What do the guys think about practical use type of course? All right, so yeah, so by a where's Wally course, you mean courses where the angled angle is let's find answers in the book. And what you're saying is, what do the guys here think about the idea of actually having training that teaches them or focuses them more on application of regulations and retention of the information? Well, I, I think a lot of people are, are probably agreeing with that. Probably agreeing with that. Um, I'm cracking, we need it two hours. Well. All right, so how many are already using AFDDs on domestics? Oh, I'm sure everyone is. Do you need to be officially employed to do MVQ level three or can I just go on site and do the required things? Um, you're supposed to have employment because you're supposed to obviously be able to perform the evidence that needs to be collected on the portfolio. Um, Without knowing too much about how everything else works with that, I do know that a lot of people in that ish in that situation go to excess training. Now I don't know if that's good. I know they get a lot of good feedback, mostly by people they help, but um, I don't know. I mean, you're supposed to obviously be in industry to then perform in industry to then have evidence collected in industry, and if you're not yet in industry, it is a bit of a chicken and egg situation. Um, I think Exodus training offer the most flexible solutions for that. I don't know what those solutions are though myself. I can't really say. Okay. Oh, there's Nigel. Hello, Nigel. Uh, sorry, lost signal testing purposes. Why not try a variant of some sort? Hmm, interesting. Maybe. <laughs> Have you not got a board in your house, Paul? You want, a, you, want, you want one for your AFDDs and surges, do you? All right. Do you think the public would be happy if Sparks could muck about with gas after a one-week course? Well, I'm not saying Sparks do, but other people do. There is um, there's an awarding body, Blue, Blue Flame Certification, I think it was. Um, they created training. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if this is still in place or if it's been like tightened up. But they created training for people to work on boilers, on gas. But they weren't allowed to be on pipes. They weren't plumbers. They weren't allowed to, to do the plumbing. But they were training directly on boilers and gas. And it was like a four or five week training thing, I think. Uh, unfortunately, if people can manipulate something that is fine, if they can manipulate it or they can 
break it up and then sell the parts off as other courses, they're going to do it. That's exactly what they've done with the Sparks, with the Part P. They broke off the domestic arm and they just restructured it and they sold it and um, now they're controlling it and reselling it. Um, we're, we're all vulnerable to it, unfortunately. Uh, it's pop. Uh, five regret figures from 2005, 25 fires, five, 25 fires per year in domestic properties by 2015 after 10 years of Part P and common persons nonsense. This increased to 250, yeah. I have a part of my grandma out. But I mean, does, does does the missus have a nice living room now? Yeah. You, you know, because you, you, it's been you know it's been a while. You've had your boards up. All right. Well, you know, I mean, geez, like this, need ten o'clock, right, gentlemen? I'm gonna clock off unless there's anything else you want to cover because this is this has been actually very good what i will say is before i actually clock off um in the comments or anything afterwards do let us know um do let us know if you want you know some of us to kind of get back together and do some more of these streams you know we could talk about industry we could talk about training we could talk about other things if if you know if some of the guys aren't available i can do some by myself i can do some on design i can do some more on the regulations all right do give us some feedback on this. Do you feel as if you think it's of value? Do let us know if you feel that you want more of this, more regular, and get some get some of you guys in to kind of talk about your experiences in the industry as well. All right. But it's nearly 10 o'clock, gentlemen, so, and ladies, if you're here. So come on, you know, there's, there's a, there must be an evening you want to get on with. It's time to stop and spend time with your family. Yeah, yeah, and not my beer's nearly run out. <laughs> and there she says remember to like and subscribe and share with other sparks yes do do that and let me just check something all right and also if you're not already done it go to here and subscribe to gary's channel because he's got to get to fifteen thousand. all right get him to fifteen thousand. all right if you do that if you go there and subscribe, get 15,000, then we'll do another stream together sometime. All right, because he's, he's, he's taking off. All right. Give a lot of love. Enjoy the sun. Thanks, Pop. Thanks for coming in. Um, you know, we need to kind of, as and as we said earlier on, 7909, there's a huge interest in that because we need to develop some stuff. All right. I've been looking at the chat. I should look there. All right. You know, so if we do ask God or anything similar again, we need to dedicate some extra time to create some content because I think there'll be a lot of interest in that, especially with the reporting on it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming in. And thank you for actually taking part in this. This is really, really, really be good. I will be uploading this as a VOD for anyone who wants to kind of see what we've talked about, what we've questioned and stuff. Feedback. Let me know what else you'd like us to talk about. Who else you'd like to get involved. All right. I'm going to play with my toy, add an outro, and make it all a little professional. And I'm going to say thank you for coming. And I will see you probably in the next video, which will probably be a day or so. Okay. Bye.